<sighs> so I've just finished recording the landscape video from last week. So if you've watched that, then you know that now I'm going to be focusing on ptarmigan photography. And as I explained in the landscape video, ptarmigan have been proving to be a little bit elusive this summer for me. I've tried several times to go out and find them and I always end up finding them when I don't have a camera. <laughs> so today I have got the whole day now that I've finished with some the landscape photography for the day. A quick recap of what happened in the last video if you haven't watched it. I've trekked up into the mountains, I've done some landscape photography which I was really happy with. It's a bit of a cloudy wet day but it looks a bit brighter now. I've forgotten my tripod for this camera so I've only got one tripod to use with the vlogging and with my camera so it's going to be a bit of a mix. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of an experiment on how I film this. It's going to be a bit of a creative day trying to find ptarmigan. Bit of a costume change, I've got a woolly hat on and my waterproof jacket on because um, it got a bit chilly all of a sudden. I was using my gloves as well but I don't need those right now as I've just been hiking up from the lock where I was down by the lochen before. I am now up on the, the steeper side of the edges, more, more around where I began the landscape video and I'm just going to sit here for a while and look, look for ptarmigan because they might be in amongst the boulders, they might be hiding a bit, they might be just out of sight and this is going to be a game of patience because they always say if you haven't seen the animal then the animal has seen you so it could be that the ptarmigan have seen me and they're not sure what to make of me so they're ducking down and I need them to accept me as part of the landscape so I'll give it a few minutes here and then I'll, I'll move further along something like that until I find some and as I said I've got all day so it's not an issue so I've been scanning the landscape for quite a while now, hoping to spot one. It's really difficult though, to be honest. They are masters of camouflage. They are, at the moment, the males are a nice mottled grey with white, and the females are a mottled brown with white, which blends in perfectly with this landscape. Gets quite frustrating after a while trying to find trying to find them. Because colour is their biggest asset, their colour is how they camouflage, so I can't use that to help find them. I've got to use uh, movement and I've got to use shape more than anything, so I've got to try and spot their shape, hopefully sitting on a rock, silhouetted, something like that, so it's nice and obvious, like I am a ptarmigan, I am not a boulder. And the other thing is movement obviously is the key one to be able to spot them if I can just see them scurrying over a boulder or something like that. Their Latin name is Lagopus muta. Lagopus means harefoot which is quite funny because um, the grouse family, red grouse and ptarmigan both have very large feet and the second part is, is muta, as in mute, and that refers to the fact that they are often very quiet. So if they did make a noise that would help me isolate down, but it echoes really well. I haven't heard any yet, and to be honest they could not be in this, this quarry today, you know? There's a big mountain and they can go wherever the hell they want, can't they? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head out 
that way. Over there. I can head over there and pick another spot just to sit and look with my binoculars because that's my best chance. I've come up a bit higher and I'm, I'm scouting out these boulder fields up here with the binoculars so I'm just gonna give it a, a few minutes of looking around up here to see if I can spot any. It was somewhere around this spot last year around this time of year that I actually managed to film them a very little bit. I'll put a, a clip of it, it's not very good quality um, but I did manage to film them somewhere around in these boulder fields up here either this one here or the one above it which you can't see right now so as I said hopefully they are creatures of habit but getting over here to this point is quite treacherous because of um, how steep it is it's boulders with massive holes that you can't see it looks solid and then you put your foot down it's not the rocks are slippery and everything else so I'm gonna show you the stone that we I began the landscape video is actually just down there. It's just that one there in the centre of the screen. I am just going to rest easy and try and spot some time again. Still proving elusive. I think I'm going to take my tripod off and just leave it here and get it on the way back down because it's really throwing me off of balance. It's quite heavy and it's a bit cumbersome and it's just annoying me. So um, I'm going to leave that here and I'll, if I do encounter one I'll be shooting handheld um, with the 500 f4. <laughs> <laughs> which is going to be a bit difficult to, <laughs> to get it crisp sharp but not impossible but I think I'm going to head further up that hillside they might be in the, the crest just there's another boulder field just above this slot so I'm going to check that one out and then if after a while they still haven't turned up I'm going to head down to Shelterstone to have some lunch and then figure out where to go from there. I told you I was going to have to be creative with how I film this. So you were just nestled into the heather. Hence the funny angle. Uh, I've come up a bit higher than I was before. I think this was the boulder field that I saw them last year. Right, I'm just going to sit here and wait. It's 
been a good 30, 40 minutes now. It's just starting to mist a bit and get a bit foggy. So I'm going to pack away my camera, put it in my bag and pick up my tripod and head down to Shelterstone for some lunch, I think. Probably as soon as I pack this away, that's when one's going to turn up, isn't it? Time to head down. Ugh. Made it down to where I began the day. <sighs> it's very annoying ptarmigan photography. Let's get some lunch. Yeah. Oh. It's been raining the entire time that I've eaten my lunch. I think I'll, I'll just stick here for a bit and just use the binoculars and, and look up there see if I can spot any but yeah oh, it's not looking good it's not looking good Oh, it's really coming down now and I think I might pull the plug on this I can barely see through my binoculars oh why doesn't anything ever go to plan eh yeah it's getting heavier so oh and it's hailing just saw some hail <laughs> stones so I'm going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. I'm really sorry we couldn't find any ptarmigan today. It was just not working out. I reckon that during the summer, they're up higher, up on the plateau of the mountains, because I've only ever seen them down here during the summer once. In the spring and winter, this place is full of them. But in the, in the summer, no, not a chance. As you saw, that day did not go to plan one bit. I was really hoping to capture some interesting ptarmigan images, show you different compositions and possibilities, because once you find them, uh, you just got to stick with them in most cases. They, they tend to be quite placid, as long as you're, you're not being erratic in your movements. So I was a bit disappointed with how the day turned out. And I actually spent about six hours looking for ptarmigan. I kept pausing, trying to spot them, taking my time to scan the landscape because they're tiny in the landscape. So I was really disappointed with how the day turned out. Now, this would be very static if I, I'm, I'm going to relay to you some information that I've learned since that day. So I wanted to overlay this footage 
my commentary with some footage that I shot of Ptarmigan last year, um, like the clip earlier in the video. So uh, I, I managed to capture and follow a family of ptarmigan that day and I got several different sequences of film when they were moving across the boulders. So I'm going to put those clips over while I continue my commentary from now on. Well I've since done some research about ptarmigan and I wanted to share some of what I learned with you. When I got back from that day, to be honest, I was a bit demoralised. I was, I felt a bit down about Photography, you know, it wasn't the first time that summer that I hadn't encountered ptarmigan and I'd been up several times trying to find the birds and I was feeling a little bit like, was it my fault that I didn't encounter them? Was I doing something wrong that would affect their behaviour or kept them hiding from me? And so I decided to do some research. I got my friend who is a biologist to, to find some papers on ptarmigan behaviour and I read through several different papers, but the best one was one conducted by Adam Watson, who was a naturalist that lived around the Cairngorms National Park, and he did several studies of behaviour of animals in the upland environment, in the alpine environment, around the Cairngorm National Park. The paper that I found was the most useful for what I wanted to know, was a population study of ptarmigan, in brackets, Lagopus muta, in Scotland. And it was published in the Journal of Animal Ecology, volume 34, in 1965. So this piece is more than 50 years old, but the research conducted was amazing. He spent more than 10 years obs um, observing the animals in their upland environment throughout the year and he, he collated this into several different papers about ptarmigan including about their feeding habits and this one which is mainly about where they are in their habitat. What I learned in that paper actually confirmed what I already knew and that is winter is the best season for f photographing ptarmigan without a doubt it is the best season because Watson observed ptarmigan flocking in groups of up to 450 birds together and so that greatly increases our chances of getting good images. They can also, in bad weather, they'll move lower in from their habitat which means that they'll, that makes it much easier for us to get to them. A lot easier on our legs, less hiking, less traversing and so that's a good tip to know that in bad weather they come lower but it was his study throughout the seasons that was most interesting so he found that in spring which is when the image that i was using earlier to show you their hairy feet i managed to get that in the spring he found that those large flocks from the winter break up into individuals and they begin mating displays which means that the males, they begin calling a lot more and they do little flights of 10 meters into the air to attract attention to themselves. And that means we can see them a lot easier as well. And one of the most fascinating points that he made was the fact that their singing and croaking can be heard as much as one kilometer away. That's amazing, that just blew my mind to be honest. And they eventually pair up and those, the pair, the male and the female, will carve out a territory and as long as the weather is good, they stay within that territory. They feed within that territory and they, they make it their own. But if there's some bad weather like a late snow, then the birds might flock together together in areas where the food is more abundant, but otherwise they remain in their territories. Those two seasons, spring and winter, seem to be the best time of year from his research because in winter they're in large flocks, making it easier for us to find a few individuals to photograph. And in the spring, they're attracting attention to themselves due to their mating behavior. And obviously this video was filmed during the summer to autumn transition. And this is where I realized that I wasn't making a mistake. It's just, I didn't know enough about the ptarmigan behavior. In summer, Watson observed that ptarmigan hardly ever vocalize. That's where they get their Latin name, which makes it harder for us to find them because they're not attracting attention to themselves. They're also unwilling to fly and they tend to just walk around the boulders, hiding among the boulders. The females stay with their chicks throughout the summer period, 
but the males will sometimes leave them and then return later in the summer. And th that was basically all the research that Watson was able to do during the summer period. I think he must have found it quite hard to observe their behaviour because there's literally only one paragraph about the summer observations for ptarmigan, whereas in his other, with the other seasons, there's a lot more information. So that suggests to me that the ptarmigan were a lot harder to observe in the summer. In late summer, when the, the seasons are transitioning to autumn, the families break up, the chicks leave their parents, and he actually noted a resurgence in mating behavior, where the male and females begin to re-establish a bond and then consequently their territories. So they start isolating patches again, mainly for berries and other food sources. And in particular in October, he observed that they only came together in the early morning and then they would separate throughout the day to feed and hiding amongst the boulders. Throughout the autumn, their behavior was most observable during the early hours of the morning and late in the evening. So from dusk, in dusk and dawn, not during the afternoon or the middle of the day. They seem to be a lot more cautious and hidden during the, those periods. He also noted that from August to October, the birds moved to areas rich in berries and the majority of the flocks of birds would be centered around the higher plateaus and the summits of the mountains, in particular Ben McDo. He also said that it was not unusual to see flocks in a quarry one day and none on another, especially in the afternoon. That really opened my eyes because in that quarry that I was on that day, I had seen the birds around that time of year, the year before. But obviously on that day, I didn't encounter a single bird. And that's when I really started to wonder if like I was doing something wrong or what have you. But it seems as if the birds are a lot more, they're, they're harder to see, they're, they're a bit more cautious, they're hiding, but it also suggests that they're more migratory. They're, they're moving from territory to territory based on food. It seems as if, like, I didn't, I might not have done anything wrong, I was just unlucky on that day. It sort of drives home the fact that when doing wildlife photography, you really need to do research about behavior. And whilst there are some really fabulous resources out there for wildlife photography information, the best place to find out about behavior is scientific papers. So if you're really targeting a specific species, I implore you to try and find some scientific papers papers about their behavior. So I really got in the flow there, but the battery on this camera died, which was a bit annoying. I really got into the flow of describing what I had learned and I was really wanting to impart my knowledge and I didn't realize this camera had failed. Where was I? That was it. I was just wrapping up where I wanted to come back to camera. So that's the end of this video, to be honest. I, I think I've imparted enough information um, and I hope it proves useful for you. The best seasons for ptarmigan photography, without a doubt, are the winter and the spring, mainly because they're just easier to observe in those periods. In the summer and autumn, it isn't impossible to see them, it just becomes more difficult. And the best advice that I learned from that paper was to be out in the early morning and in the high plateaus. So up higher than I was above the quarries, the, the population seemed to be higher during the summer and autumn, and then they come into the quarries more during the winter and the spring. Just give yourself plenty of time. So head out early morning, stay late into the evening, and, and spend several days trying to get, trying to find them because they, they seem to be a lot more wary, they seem to be a lot more willing to move through the territory during the summer. I'm really glad that I decided to make this video because I've learned a lot in the process of making this video and I wanted to impart some of that knowledge to you. But it's also inspired me to not give up and to keep trying and know that it's not really, it wasn't really my fault that I didn't encounter any ptarmigan, it's just it was a bad day. And that happens. That really does happen, um, especially in wildlife photography. Wildlife photography is incredibly time consuming, I suppose is the best word. It, it, you have to put in a lot of effort, a lot of time to get good results. And people take that for granted when they see wildlife images, how much effort has gone into getting those pictures. So. I hope you can see that. I do have another wildlife fil um, photography film ready to 
edit, I recorded it. It was a fantastic day. It was a long day, but I got some really good images that I'm really looking forward to editing. And that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. And um, it was mountain hares. I, I'm, I went and did some mountain hare photography and I, I oh, it, was a, it was a really long day, but I got some amazing images and I'm really happy with how they turned out. So you got that to look forward to coming up soon. I'm sorry the video didn't go to plan and I will definitely be heading out in the future trying to get some more ptarmigan images. I really want to get a project of ptarmigan together through different seasons in, and try and get them in different, displaying different behaviours. Anyway, I'm rambling so I'm going to finish off. If you have enjoyed today, then please consider subscribing. It's a big help to my channel. Um, as I said, I've got the mountain hare photography vlog coming up in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, I've got some more landscape photography vlogs coming up. And I hope that you're enjoying the journey and you're learning something as we go. Um, that's what I wanted to do with this channel. And I hope to be introducing some more educational vlogs in the future as well. And if you have liked today's video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. That's a really big help for me to know what is working, what isn't. Every little helps with, my, with a small channel such as this. I'm gonna shut up now. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next one.